I am Gina with the Penobscot Marine Museum in Searsport, Maine. In our last Peek into Paintings program, we looked at this painting of the Clarissa B. Carver, completed by a Chinese artist around 1880. This is the painting we're going to look at more fully today. In this painting, we see a ship at sea. The waves are tossing the vessel, causing it to lean toward the artist. The white capped waves contrast sharply with the dark blue water, creating a lot of drama. The sky is a pale blue with enough light to highlight the ship, but also plenty of clouds. As we zoom in, we see the wind is filling the sails. The artist has taken care to draw in all of the lines or ropes necessary to hold and manage so many sails. There aren't a lot of distinguishable details close up, but we do see the aft cabin. We see a man at the wheel. Moving toward the bow or front of the ship, we pass more crew members who are likely getting sprayed by that wave. And here's one brave man climbing onto the bowsprit. Imagine that. The ship is tossing in the wind and the waves and you have to climb out over the water. Who are the members of the crew? You can start to imagine what their lives are like when you see them in the painting. Finding their story can be a challenge. Photos of crew members are uncommon. One resource we have to find out something about the crew are crew lists. There was a lot of documentation for sailors in the 19th century. The official crew list was required to be filed with the customs collector at that port. Paperwork could also include any changes to the crew, how the crew was paid, and when they were discharged. Let's see what we can find out about these shadowy figures. This document is the crew list from the Clarissa B. Carver when she left the port of New York City in December 1884. At the top of the chart, each column has a title. The first column is Signature of Seaman. They're all written in cursive and some are more readable than others. The second name is H.B. Walker. The fifth name is Amando Vieri. Number nine is Alfred Russell. Number 15 is N.M. Nielsen. And number 16 is John M. Nelson. The surnames give a suggestion of where these men may be from. The second column is the birthplace. So if you had guessed by the last name, this might verify it. Walker was from Maine. Veri is from Manila. Russell is English and both Nielsen and Nelson are Norwegian. In all, there were five men from Norway, three from Germany, two from Sweden, two from England and two from Maine. One from Quebec and one from Nova Scotia equals two Canadians. Manila is a city in the Philippines and there was a crew member from there as well as one from China. The next column is age. At 18, Vary is the youngest crew member. Harry Rosengreen from Sweden and T. Sperson of Norway share the oldest age of 40. And the average age is 28. Now we get to the height column. The average height for sailors on the Clarissa V. Carver on this trip was five feet, seven and a half inches. The next two columns are for descriptions, for complexion, then hair. These are both really interesting and helpful columns and also problematic. The terms used historically to describe people of color are often words that were not acknowledged as offensive in the past, but today are outdated and inappropriate. So let's take a look. The first sailor listed is described as having an L complexion and BR hair. L is likely an abbreviation of light. BR likely means brown. However, sometimes there is a BL for blonde. In a scribbled abbreviation, BR and BL can look a lot alike. What do you think this says? 
On the second line, we see ditto marks indicating Walker was also light-skinned and brown-haired. But the fourth sailor and Veri are not listed as light-skinned. We see Y-E-L, which is an abbreviation of yellow, and B-L-K, a shortened form of black. At the time this was written, yellow would have indicated these two members of the crew were Asian. We already knew that they were from China and Manila, a fact this physical description supports. The next column is wages per month. The first crew member receives $50 per month and lines six through 18 all receive $10 per month. Viri only receives $5 per month. Why do you think there's a big difference? Let's skip over to the column over here. In what capacity? This column lists the job position for each crew member. The first line who received $50 per month is the mate. Walker is the second mate. The 40 year old Norwegian was the ship's carpenter. John Lee Aqui from China was the steward. The steward was the captain's servant and kept the captain's cabin clean. In the deep sea, sea trades, many stewards were from China or another Asian country. Amando Viri is listed as the cook. The cook make, made the meals for the captain's cabin and the crew. And all the rest of the men are on this list are listed as seamen. Looking at this painting and adding names and descriptions from the crew list, helps to make these workers more real. As it turns out, this was the last crew of the Clarissa B. Carver. Under the command of Sears Ports Captain Leroy Dow, the Clarissa B. Carver left New York on December 9, 1884 and arrived at Yokohama on April 25, 1885. The voyage took 137 days, which may have been the fastest ever made by a sailing vessel at that season of the year. Ships leaving Atlantic ports in December averaged 170 day voyages to Japan. Heading back to New York, the Clarissa B. Carver was near Kobe, Japan when it was run down by the British steamer Glamorganshire. The Clarissa was wrecked and Captain Dow spent several years in Japan fighting legal battles against the owners of the steamer before he finally recovered the full amount of his claim. Here's a photograph taken in Yokohama between 1885 and 1887. Captain Leroy Dow is seated at the left. Behind him stands his chief mate, Thomas Laffin. While there, Thomas Laffin met a Japanese girl, Mio Ishii of Yumoto, Japan, and fell in love. When the trials were finally resolved, Laffin chose to stay in Japan, marry Mio, and they had seven or eight children together. This painting was completed by Charles Rosner. It is undated. Penobscot Marine Museum has another Rosner painting of the Clarissa that was completed in 1932. Perhaps this painting also dates to that era. Born in, in Germany in 1894, Charles Rosner shipped as a sailor and made several trips around Cape Horn on, on sailing vessels. After a brief stint in a copper mine in Peru, Rosner ended up in New York City by the 1920s and became a full-time artist painting marine paintings. The Rosner painting of the Clar Clarissa B. Carver was likely completed at least 50 years after the Chinese painting. Both depict the same ship. What do you notice about these paintings? How are the paintings similar? The sails are unfurled in both. Both paintings show crew members on board. The Clarissa in the Rosner painting is tipped toward the viewer so we can see more of the deck, but the earlier painting actually shows more detail, such as the pumps. The Chinese painting is near the port with clear landmarks in the background while the Rosner painting is in the middle of the ocean. No land, birds, or other vessels anywhere in sight. The Chinese artist may have been looking at the Clarissa as he painted. Charles Rosner wasn't even born yet when the British steamer collided with the Clarissa. 
Both paintings lend some understanding as to what life would have been like if you were a crew member on board a sailing vessel in the 1870s and 1880s. Thank you.